Hi, I'm Paul Kappinga, CEO of Advisor Medical. What I want to do today is demonstrate how to, why to perform an ultrasound guided trigger point as well as how to perform it. The real value in using ultrasound for trigger points is to alleviate risk. And by that I mean avoid the risk of a pneumothorax. There's a large incident rate of pneumothoraxes in trigger points. In ultrasound, because we can see the pleura, as well as the muscle bellies, we can 100% alleviate that risk. So let's show you how to perform this and what everything, the structures look like under ultrasound. So I'm going to be using the Zono with a high frequency linear transducer. The direction you want to use the transducer on the patient to start off is superior to inferior, going up and down the back. So I'm going to make sure my indicator here is uh, pointing up because and that the only benefit with that is on my left hand side is superior because of how I'm looking at her. My right hand side is inferior. So on the ultrasound screen, I want my left to be left and my right to be right. So I'm holding my probe, so my indicator is pointing up. So on the left-hand side will be superior, and the right-hand side will be inferior. I just adjusted the depth there, and with the probe going superior to inferior here, what I'm going to naturally get is a cross-section of the ribs. So here we can see the shadow, and because ultrasound cannot see through bone, we're going to get the top of the bone here, which is the top of the rib, and then shadowing beneath. So here's what I have, a beautiful image of, right here is just a little bit of subcutaneous fat, and then we've got a muscle belly here, a muscle belly here, and then a muscle belly here, and this bright white line. Go ahead and take a deep breath in, and then relax. You can see the bright white line is the pleura. Now, the myofascia under ultrasound shows up brighter white. And muscle is more fluid-filled, so it shows up a little bit darker. So if we look into the screen here, we can tell the different muscle bellies. Here's a muscle belly right here. Here's the end of it because of the myofascia. The intercostal muscle starts here and ends here. So this is the intercostal muscle. If you were doing an intercostal nerve block, you would lay the needle just underneath the inferior border of the rib in the intercostal muscle. So it's a very nice straight shot for that. But for trigger points, our main concern is the pleura. And as you can see, we can see the pleura very nice in this view because of all the shadowings, and I know the pleura is going to show up bright white. As I go up into her traps, I'm going to show you an interesting thing. So here, I am all the way up into the traps, and here's my image. Look how close. We're two centimeters from skin to pleura. On someone like this, the... Um, there is a higher rate of pneumothorax when you pop in a trigger point into the traps because you don't realize how close that lung really is. Using ultrasound, you can see how close that lung really is and completely avoid it when you enter in with your needle. Now, let's say the patient's sitting up, and it's just going to be more convenient for you to come in with your needle like this. That's okay. Once you identify using the ribs kind of as your landmark, and you identify the depth of the pleura, you can go ahead and turn your transducer this way, and notice, even though I don't necessarily have the landmarks of the ribs, I can clearly see my pleura in this view. But it does help to start here, and then rotate out, keeping your eye on the pleura. This is why you should use ultrasound for trigger points, and how to actually perform a trigger point injection under ultrasound guidance.